Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, in our last lecture, we have discussed uh, how we can quantify or we can measure the absolute value of elasticity of demand along various points on a given demand curve. We have considered both linear and nonlinear demand curves. In other words, usual demand curve we have considered downward sloping, but those demand curves can be a straight line, can be a general hyperbolic kind of thing, not straight line like that. And we have discussed how to find out elasticity of demand or more specifically own price elasticity of demand on different points along that demand curve. So, today we will play uh, with that concepts or around that concepts using uh, different alternative types of demand curves and what are the elasticity of demand value across different points on each of those demand curves, right. So, let us let us talk. Uh, so, uh, of course, I, I think all of we or all of you already got uh, an impression that if demand curve is relatively flatter, uh, own price elasticity of demand will be relatively more vis a vis a demand curve relatively steeper. Okay. So, uh, when we are telling that uh, own price elasticity of demand is greater than more uh, greater, greater than or own price elasticity of demand is more in one diag one sort of demand curve vis a vis the another sort of demand curve. As we clarified in our last class, we are always talking about the absolute value of the elasticity of demand. Because as you know that since elasticity of demand and the demand curve is downward sloping, this elasticity value is always uh, negative, right. So, in usual case of course, okay. So, it is negative. So, that is why when we are telling demand is uh, elasticity of demand is more, it is in always in absolute sense, right. So, let us discuss uh, why the or let us uh, show how uh, say one relatively flatter demand curve elasticity of demand is more vis a vis on the same point uh, on a uh, relatively steeper demand curve. So, let us see. So, uh, say suppose we are taking uh, this as usual, we are measuring quantity demanded in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis and suppose we have two demand curves. Say one is A B, another is A B prime or A prime B prime, right. And when we are telling that relatively steeper demand curve, relatively flatter demand curve and elasticity of demand on a point. In on one curve is larger than on the other curve. So, let it will be easy for if we take the common point on both the demand curves. Say, suppose this point say E, right. So, as you know that E point lies on both the demand curves, two alternative demand curves we are uh, we have considered here one is A B, another is say A prime B prime, and E point. Uh, lies on both the demand curves. Now, the question is elasticity of demand or own price elasticity of demand and its absolute value okay. at point E, if we consider E point to be on the AB demand curve, what is that value? B sub is on the A prime B prime demand curve, what is that value? Right? It is very easy to understand. So, when E point on AB demand curve, so elasticity value is must be elasticity value is basically E B by E A, okay. Absolute value of the own price elasticity is basically E B by E A because we have we have shown in the last uh, last lecture that it will be the lower segment of the demand curve by the upper segment of the demand curve. So A B is the demand curve, E is a point on that. So lower segment of the demand curve is basically this. Upper segment of that demand curve is basically that, right? This is that E point when E point lies on A prime B prime demand curve, it's absolute value of the own price elasticity definitely E B prime by E A prime. Okay. So, as you can easily see that E B is less than E B prime and E A is greater than E A prime. Right. So, definitely this is lower than this because numerator is larger and denominator is smaller. Okay. So, when we are talking about or so we are getting an impression that 
if we have two demand curves one is relatively flatter another is relatively steeper along the relatively flatter demand curve elasticity relative elasticity of demand is relative or uh, elasticity own price elasticity of demand is relatively larger than the vis a vis the relatively steeper demand curves ok. So, using that diagram this diagram it is clear. Now, we can play around this uh, this uh, various uh, this type of device, say suppose if alternatively ok 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 alternatively suppose say we have if we have parallel demand curves as usual we are measuring quantity here price here and suppose we have one demand curve this say this is a b ok and suppose this is a prime b prime where a b and a prime b prime are parallel to each other ok. Now, uh, you know that if we move along the horizontal axis or along this kind of horizontal line ok as we are moving. So, this point and this point suppose this point is E this point is E prime. So, if we compare the elasticity or same own price elasticity of demand its absolute value at E point and E prime point. So, when we are talking about at E point E point on the E point on the A B demand curve and E prime point on the A prime B prime demand curve. So, clearly elasticity of demand is at E point is larger. Why? Because look at here at E point elasticity of demand is E B by E A and E prime point it will be E prime B prime by E prime A prime. So, in both the cases look at here the numerator E B and E prime B prime these are same because why because since this this red color horizontal line is parallel to the horizontal axis and the two demand curve A B and A prime B prime are parallel to each other. So, by virtue of that this is a parallelogram basically E E prime B prime B this is a parallelogram. Okay, if that is the case E B equals to E prime B prime. So, this two elasticity the elasticity at A E point on A B demand curve and elasticity at E prime point on A prime B prime demand curve if we consider. So, both the elasticity values numerator value is same, but denominator is more in the case of A prime B prime demand curve. So, definitely elasticity is less as E prime point. Okay. So, in that way, so similarly, uh, similarly if we if we take an another the same kind of thing parallel demand curve, but if we go vertically say suppose say as usual quantity here price here one demand curve is this another demand curve is this a b and a b prime suppose a b or a prime b prime ok. They are parallel and we are moving this kind of vertical line ok. So, suppose this is E this is E prime ok and we can easily show that elasticity at E prime point is more than elasticity as E point. Elasticity when we are talking about let me clarify again elasticity at E prime point when we are telling elasticity of demand at E prime point considering E prime point on the demand curve A prime B prime exactly the same way elasticity of demand at E point considering the E point on the demand curve A B point. So, in that way if we compare definitely elasticity at E prime point is more than elasticity at E point because here this is the numerator and this is the another numerator. So, here numerator for this elasticity value or elasticity at this point numerator is more than the numerator for the elasticity of at E point, but both the denominator is same because here A A prime E prime E this is a parallelogram. So, A E and A prime E prime they are same ok. So, in that way if we go say along a horizontal line what will be the elasticity on the two, dim, uh, two points on the two parallel demand curves, if we go along a vertical line what will be the two. So, in that way alternatively we can compare or we can play around different demand curves or taking different alternative different type of demand curves and what will be the elasticity of demand value on those. Can we can we have an any idea suppose we have 
and this kind of uh, similarly two parallel demand curves uh, this is a b this is a prime b prime ok of course we are measuring quantity here price quantity in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and suppose we are along a ray through the origin ok. So, suppose this is e point and this is e prime point right. So, what will be the elasticity of demand at e point when it is on the a b demand curve and at the e prime point when it is on the a prime b prime demand curve if you compare you can show that these two points elasticity of demand is same ok. It is very easy to prove suppose let us prove that suppose O is our origin. So, you can understand that from the ok ok you can easily understand that two triangle O E B and triangle O E prime B uh, this is B prime right B prime these two triangles are similar because one triangle is this another triangle is this and since E B and E prime B prime are parallel to each other. So, these two triangles are similar. So, if that is the case we can write that by similarity of these two triangles we can write that O E by E B is exactly equals to O E prime by E prime B prime right. So, that is suppose our equation number 1 exactly same way the triangle say O E A and and triangle say O E prime A prime they are also similar right O E A and O E prime A prime O E A and O E prime A prime. So, they are similar. So, since they are similar we can write O E by E A will be exactly equals to O E prime by E prime A prime. So, if we take its reciprocal so this is basically A by O E will be exactly equals to E prime A prime by O E prime that is suppose our equation 2. Now, if you do that equation 1 into equation 2 what you will get mind that both side of equation 1 and 2 whatever the 4 fractions are there none of them are 0. So, we can easily do this kind of thing. So, if 1 and 2 if left hand side if you uh, multiply so this will be O E by E B into E A by O E that must be equals to O E prime by E prime B prime into E prime A prime by O E prime. So, this O E though this O E O E prime O E prime will cancel out. So, you will land that E A by E B ok ok. So, let us let us uh, ok. So, we can write so E A by E B that must be equals to E prime A prime by E prime B prime ok. So, E A E A by E B exactly equals to E prime A prime by E prime B prime. So, if we take the reciprocal simply E B by E A. So, this thing that last part is basically same as E B by E A is exactly equals to E prime B prime by E prime A prime. So, E B by E A, E B by E A is basically elasticity of demand at E point on the demand curve A B and E prime B prime uh, by E prime A prime is basically elasticity of demand at E prime point on the demand curve A prime B prime. So, definitely the elasticity of demand at this point and elasticity of demand at this point are same and exactly the same way we can show this point and this point elasticity of demand are same, this point and this point elasticity of demand are same, the same 
on those points on the corresponding demand curve, not the same demand curve, right? Those two points are not the on the same demand curve, right? So, in that way, we can take various points, various alternative demand curves, and various related points and compare what are the elasticity of demand on those points, right? It will be helpful as we we move around or play around this kinds of alternative possibilities, our understanding of elasticity of demand will be much and much fine tuned. Okay? So, this is all about how we can, uh, so uh, basic understanding or basic idea to discuss all these things are that uh, we have started with as you can remember, uh, we have started with today uh, that how uh, we can show that elasticity of our own price elasticity of demands absolute value is be relatively larger in a flatter demand curve and all these things playing around we have discussed in that context right now let us discuss that say taking say alternative uh, different types of uh, demand curves and their elasticity of demand values and all depending on the elasticity of demand value okay so let us uh, draw the five alternative diagrams Or say suppose uh, all these diagrams horizontal uh, axis we are measuring quantity and vertical axis we are measuring price, all the diagram we are measuring the same thing, okay. Or few alternative diagrams let us discuss, okay. Suppose on extreme case, suppose this is the demand curve, demand curve is vertical line, okay. So, at this point, at this point, at this point, various uh, points, what is the elasticity of demand you can easily calculate, okay. Since quantity you are measuring in the horizontal axis, so uh, from say suppose this is A point and this is B point. So, A point and B point, its uh, price is changing, right, but uh, quantity remains the same. So, del Q amount is 0, right. So, elasticity is definition del Q by del P into P by Q uh, that if you plot there you will see that across different different points right say suppose B point and C point right. So, B point and C point both elasticity is 0, elasticity value is 0. Not only that along that uh, vertical line every point the elasticity own price elasticity value is 0, okay. One departure now we can get one, one uh, essential message that we have. Uh, we have shown that if your demand curve is straight line, okay, then along that demand curve various points elasticity of demand value uh, changes. But what we have proved that we have proved in the last class. So, that changing actually in that case demand curve is usual downward sloping, not this kind of vertical or horizontal kind of extreme demand curves, right. So, exactly the same way if we have a this kind of horizontal demand curve, we can show that all these points uh, elasticity de of demand value is undefined or sometimes that is called infinitely large, okay. Another caveat, since if we have a demand curve, unusual demand curve or extreme demand curve which is vertical, okay, we can show and we are showing here that along the different points on that demand curve elasticity demand value is 0. So, we can tell that along a vertical demand curve elasticity of demand value is same and that same value is 0 at different points value elasticity value is same on that demand curve right and that same value is 0. Here although this point is infinitely large, this point also infinitely large since infinity does not have any any definition or any boundary right this mass say 35000 kilometer is infinity like that so there is no such definition for infinity although at different values it is infinitely large we can write but it is always better we should not claim that these are same at this point and this point because here infinitely large here will be infinitely large but we should not tell that they are same okay anyway anyway but we can understand we can understand the basic message if we have a demand curve as a vertical, if we have demand curve horizontal this kinds of extreme, extreme kind of demand curve, right. So, what will be the uh, elasticity of demand value on alternative, alternative points on that demand curve, right, okay. So, this is the thing. So, now say suppose we have a downward sloping demand curve, okay, can we get, so if demand curve is downward sloping or usual demand curve, okay. And if it is linear, we know that along that various points on the demand curve, 
elasticity of demand value changes from one point to another. So, if we at all search for a demand curve along different points on that elasticity value remains fixed that should not be a straight line for sure at least that message we are getting. So, after few minutes we will discuss that uh, what that kind of demand curves look like ok. So, so, so two different terminologies we will get. So, here elasticity of demand value is 0, here infinitely large if we can have say this kind of straight line demand curve and its mid point suppose mid point means this distance and that distance elasticity value definitely at this point is 1. Okay. This segment elasticity value is greater than 1, this segment elasticity value is less than 1 right. So, everywhere absolute value of elasticity absolute value equals to absolute value of elasticity is less than 1, absolute value is elasticity is 0 and that absolute value of elasticity is say uh, infinitely large right. So, in this so we can take so absolute value everywhere look at here we are discussing about absolute value right. So, that means when we are telling absolute value is less than 1 like this kind of case it must be a fraction right. When we are talking of fraction means it is in between 0 and 1 in that sense positive fraction right. It is also in this case also it is a positive fraction, but fraction is greater than 1 in that way right. So, let us bring certain terminologies say when absolute elasticity value is say less than 1 we will call say for the demand curve or for the commodity or for the demand curve where elasticity value is this kind of thing we will tell that that demand is inelastic demand curve ok or that demand is inelastic demand and for the commodity for which this is the value we will, we will tell that demand for that commodity is inelastic in that way ok. So, exactly the same way when this is 1 also this is inelastic this will be called unit elastic ok and when this E value is greater than 1 it will be called you can easily understand then elastic if a commodity for whom for which my elasticity of demand own price elasticity of demand is more than 1 we will call that my demand for that commodity is elastic ok is elastic ok in that way. And definitely two extreme case when this is equals to 0 one extreme case and another extreme case this is infinitely large ok. So, this case it will be called perfect leak in elastic and this case it will be called perfectly elastic. So, demand is perfectly elastic in this case and demand is perfectly inelastic in this case. I am hopeful I, I am I am quite sure that all of you can understand in which sense this is perfectly inelastic and this is perfectly elastic. because when it is greater than 1 it is elastic and its extreme value when the limiting case when we can reach the infinitely large. So, it that is the perfectly elastic exactly the same way when it is less than 1 uh, it is inelastic and which is the minimum value or limiting case where we can attain that is the 0 value when we attain perfectly inelastic in that sense right. Now, let us discuss and when it is 1 that time it is called unit elastic ok. So, this alternative terminology is also nothing to memorize and nothing try to memorize. So, you if you if you uh, logically try to understand you can understand easily that what are the how the terminology alternative terminologies are coming into the picture ok. All we are discussing about elasticity of demand right what are the factors that determine this elasticity of demand right. So, three four factors are there. So, first factor of course, so, we are discussing now determinants of elasticity of demand right. So, first factor of course, availability of substitute availability of close substitute. So, you can easily understand that if there is a commodity we are consuming who has another close substitute available in the market. 
So, definitely my demand for that commodity will be much more responsive or much more price sensitive. Okay. So, if close substitute are available in the market, definitely it will be more elastic demand. Right? Why? Let us take an example, say simple example bath soap. Bath soap, bath soap bar, what we use in our daily life during uh, bathing, right? You, you know that lot of alternative varieties are available in the market, mostly alternative brand, okay, Vivel, Piers, Dove, like so many other varieties, right? So, you can understand under the Ceteris Paribas condition, say under the Ceteris Paribas condition means we are suppose considering a particular brand, say Vivel, okay. Under the Ceteris Paribas condition means when all other whatever the available bath soaps are there in the market, their price is not changing, if Vivel price is little bit change, right, what customers will react? Perhaps customer will quickly switch from Vivel product to the another, another brand. Right. So, customer will be more uh, price sensitive okay, because uh, uh, close substitutes are available in the market. And if there is no close substitute or not much close substitutes are available in the market, uh, customers cannot be that much price sensitive. Right. So, elasticity will be less. Okay. So, of course, so availability of close substitute determine the elasticity of demand value. Second, nature of the commodity what we are consuming, nature of the commodity itself commodity or good whatever or service, commodity itself. How the nature say suppose one commodity is necessary commodity to me. So, definitely that I cannot be or I cannot behave much price sensitive way uh, for that commodity because it is a necessary to me right say say food items right rice, wheat or bread or whatever food items right those are necessary to us right. So, uh, even if their price increases huge, right, we cannot cut down our consumption to that much extent, right, because we have to consume those are necessary to us. Vis a vis, when and similarly, the alternatively, if their price falls uh, very much, so should we consume uh, huge amount? Since those are necessary, we are almost consuming whatever we require, okay, unless uh, we have some. Uh, uh, starvation kind of situation or we have uh, we do not have enough money to purchase the enough amount of food for our uh, consumption. If even if price uh, falls very much right we cannot increase that much of the uh, consumption of that commodity because since it is a necessary we have to consume uh, the required amount of quantity or some little bit adjustment of that not very away from that required quantity. Right. So, that is the when the commodity is necessary to us, our elasticity of demand will be more inelastic. Vis a vis when the commodity is a luxury commodity, right, we can luxury since the commodity is luxury uh, for our consumption or for our for our uh, daily life, right. So, without that commodity we can sustain, right. So, that is why if we will be much more price sensitive to that commodity, if price increases we will perhaps uh, stop purchasing that commodity right in that way. Okay. Similarly, say how we are defining the commodity itself or de definition of the market. By this what we are referring say suppose if we are say broader versus narrower broad broader versus narrower definition broader broad versus narrow definition right. Say suppose when we are talking about a commodity is food definitely its elasticity of demand will be less because food is a necessary commodity to us. Okay. So, its elasticity of demand will be inelastic, our demand will be inelastic for that commodity. But if we consider a specific type of food, ice cream, ice cream also food, right? but ice cream when we are telling that it is a narrow definition of food, okay? a specific type of uh, food. Right. So, definitely our elasticity of demand will be much more price sensitive to that. Why? Because maybe uh, when ice cream demand is uh, uh, our price increases very high, perhaps we will quickly switch to the another substitute food item, right? It is a cold drink kind of thing, right? Ice cream is a dessert. Uh, if it is a dessert, we perhaps we will uh, quickly switch uh, to another sweet kind of thing or some pie, some kind of thing, right? or if it is a it is a cold due to cold we are or, or hot weather we are talking we are uh, taking ice cream we are consuming ice cream perhaps we will switch to the cold drinks 
right. So, in that way when we are defining that uh, commodity itself in a relatively broader definition kind of thing like food, then elasticity of demand will be relatively inelastic and when it is a narrower it will be more, much more elastic. Similarly, time horizon say 4 time horizon time horizon that also determine that elasticity of demand. Uh, to be specific when it is a relatively smaller time a shorter time span elasticity will be more or our uh, demand will be more inelastic vis a vis longer time or larger time span or relatively yes longer time span elasticity will be much more or demand will be much more elastic. Elastic why let us give an example say suppose uh, I, I live in a city ok and uh, certain distance uh, my residence in the city and my workplace and there is a distance right. So, I am habituated to uh, uh, commute uh, between my home to my office uh, by my personal uh, four wheeler car right. Uh, so, since I have a car so petroleum products is an essential commodity to me because uh, it is fuel for my car right. Now, if petrol price suddenly increases very high perhaps within the shorter time span maybe say next within next one week or so I cannot adjust my behavior right. But perhaps petrol price if increases in that way and for the over the long period say maybe next one year next two years like that perhaps in the longer time span I will try to adjust my behavior perhaps I will not uh, use my car to uh, commute daily and quickly switch to the alternative means of transport maybe bus or maybe metros whatever public transport uh, available in that city right. So, this time horizon means relatively longer period it is easy for adjust our behavior. So, as a result our demand for this essential commodity say fuel here uh, our my demand for that fuel will be much more inelastic when it is relatively smaller period of time within next one week or so. I cannot immediately switch my behavior right, but if given a sufficiently longer time I can adjust my behavior to switch say from the my own car uh, little bit uh, comfortable uh, journey to perhaps I will compromise little bit to avail uh, to public transport system uh, to cut down my uh, transportation cost right. So, in these are the factors which determine elasticity of demand ok. Uh, okay. Thank you.